So turning to section six, which is the bribery of the foreign public official, this offence will be committed if a person offers or gives a financial or other advantage to a foreign public official in his f official capacity with the intention of influencing the foreign public official and obtaining or retaining business. So there is no improper element. And it seems to me that inevitably catches, at least on the face of it, for example, um, inviting your uh, foreign public official who may have the authority to issue your banking license, may have the authority to license your products that you want to sell in that jurisdiction, you know, the mere fact that you've invited them to London, for example, could be seen as uh, offering an advantage. Um, so there is certainly a lot of concern about the um, width of Section 6. And I'm, I'm afraid I'm not going to stand here this morning and tell you for sure what is OK and what is not. And the Serious Fraud Office, despite the best efforts by the CBI, in my view, are not going to tell you either uh, what is and what isn't. Um, legitimate hospitality in this context. And you're going to have to take into account all of the factors I talked about in, in respect of sections one and two, but you are undoubtedly going to have to be a lot more careful about business reasons, making sure they're recorded com contemporaneously, um, making uh, sure uh, that, that that kind of entertainment doesn't happen too close to a bid for a contract, for example, or a tender and that any hospitality that accompanies, say, a factory visit or a, a sales promotion is really uh, quite moderate and linked to a business case. Now, that is undoubtedly going to put an increased burden on business. Um, I think the systems uh, that we've looked at um, or heard about earlier this morning are going to be very important in helping uh, you with that. But clearly, individuals are going to need to be taking responsibility and looking at where the red flags are coming up you know, why is a particular individual always out for lunch with this particular individual? Is it because they're mates and there's no real corrupt intention but they're defrauding your business? Uh, or is it because they're trying to uh, get an advantage improperly uh, or otherwise uh, with the foreign public official? So a lot to think about there um, for, for business, certainly those operating uh, with, with foreign public officials. Um, We've talked about the uh, adequate procedures um, being updated. Certainly the draft I saw in early July was a shambles. It was about that thick and certainly not a workable document for any kind of business, uh, large or small. Um, as I've said, there's continued pressure for um, the guidance to be issued by the SFO to cover not just adequate systems and controls, but also this whole area of hospitality. Um, and I just think it's um, impossible for the SFO, in fact, to give any kind of guidance on what is appropriate hospitality. You're going to need to think about what's okay for your business, what's seen by the market as okay for your business, what jurisdiction you're in. Although custom doesn't give you any kind of defense, local custom certainly doesn't give you any kind of defense, that will uh, form the basis of whether what you're doing or not uh, looks improper uh, or looks uh, like it might be trying to get business uh, um, that you wouldn't otherwise have. So local custom is important in that context, just in terms of uh, what might be lavish hospitality, rather than giving you a lawful excuse for uh, committing acts of bribery. At the risk of repeating myself, I do really want to emphasise that uh, there is a lot of talk around this area. My personal view is a lot of it is slightly hysterical and misguided, uh, but it is a very serious issue. But what the government is really trying to do with this act is trying to stop large, corrupt payments to um, public officials to build bridges, to have oil and gas licenses, to have banking licenses. They are not actually that interested, in my view, uh, and have stated it publicly in prosecuting individuals uh, for these kind of breaches, particularly where they're happening overseas. There's all sorts of difficulties with evidence um, and whether it's in the public interest and all of those uh, factors. But the reason why it's so important that you get it right is firstly, section one and section six are the two offenses that, bribe the, uh, that bind the corporate. So just to be clear, the section two, the receiving of the bribe, does not give corporate liability. And again, there's quite a lot of misunderstanding about that. 
And the reason why Section 2, the receiving the bribe, doesn't give you corporate liability is because the Serious Fraud Office and the FSA want you to tell them about it. And they don't want you to be concerned while you're telling them about it that you might have committed the corporate offence. So it's to encourage self-reporting. And it's also to encourage you to take uh, serious action against those people in your business who are inappropriately receiving bribes. So just coming towards the end then, um, Section 1 and Section 6 are important in their own right, but they're mainly important because if I was a prosecutor, it would be the starting point or a key point when I would look at whether your, whether your systems and controls were adequate. If you don't have a gifts and hospitality register, if you don't have an ethics gifts and hospitality policy, if when red flags come into your system you do nothing about it, that is evidence the best kind of evidence you could give a prosecutor to show that your systems and controls are failing. And that's, in my view, why it's so important that you get this right. Um, I think that as a business, you have to balance uh, over prescriptive rules. I think you have to balance over onerous procedure, um, which certainly can um, stifle entrepreneurial activity. Clearly, sales forces are particularly at risk uh, in this area and need to be controlled. Uh, in my experience, they're particularly resistant to being controlled. So if you put in systems in place that are unworkable for them, they will find a way around them. And that's why it's very important, I think, to take a practical approach um, to this area and, in fact, to the Act generally by looking at your risk appetite as a business, your risk in terms of sector, where you're operating, and who in your business are the high-risk people? That doesn't mean not everyone needs training, but different people are going to need different kinds of training, and different resources are going to need to be focused on, on the more high-risk areas. And nothing, nothing will um, work better than it, people, leaders and middle managers, where these things often happen in the middle management area, taking responsibility for uh, looking at these things and questioning why they're happening and dealing with them while they go, when they go wrong. Um, I think that's probably all I wanted to say on that for the moment. Um, I hope that it was practical and relevant. Um, that was my intention anyway. Thank you very much.